Welcome to LG Path Lab Pathology webinar series. Thank you so much, Dr. Limsi Gupta, for inviting me to do this webinar. My topic for today is systematic approach to peripheral blood film. My name is Dr. Babita Kajal. I'm a general pathologist at Joseph Brand Hospital in Ontario in Canada. These are my objectives, indications, different preparation methods, staining methods, and generalized approach to blood smears. This is the basis of hematopoiesis. In the bone marrow, we have different types of stem cells and from, the, from those stem cells, we have either myeloid cells or lymphoid cells. And also we have different types of stem cells that will form RBCs, platelets. From the myeloid, we have myeloblasts. And in the peripheral blood film, we get mature uh, granulocytes. And from the lymphoid cells, we have lymphoblasts. And then in the blood film, we have different types of lymphocytes. And depending on the phenotype, either they are B, T, or natural killer cells. Immature cells should stay back in the bone marrow. And mature cells, we should see in the peripheral blood film. Uh, this is the basic concept of the hematopoiesis. So these are different indications of the peripheral blood film to view. So either there are CBC flags, those flags, they can be quantitative or qualitative. And each lab, depending upon these kind of flags, they have different policies and there is a marked variation in the reporting policies. Or sometimes we get a request from the clinicians. So again, depending on the clinical picture of, for example, anemia, cytopenia, lipocytosis, leukemia, hemolysis, or inclusions, we get those kind of requests. And we are living in an era of molecular and very advanced technology uh, testing, but peripheral blood film still is a very important, inexpensive, and a rapid diagnostic tool. This is an excellent paper. This is International Council for Standardization in Hematology. It recommends different type of standardization of nomenclature and grading of the morphological features. From the clinical indications, this is the list of uh, different indications. Uh, this is the paper. And the, those indications can be anemia, hemoglobinopathies, thrombocytopenia, lymphomas, lymphoproliferative or myeloproliferative disorders, different hemolytic pictures, or any infectious organisms. So these are the indications, different types of clinical indications. So as I said, those flags, they can be qualitative or quantitative. So for example, qualitative. So for example, if patient, they have anemia, hemoglobin of six gram, that will automatically reflex for the peripheral blood film review. Or there are qualitative problems. For example, there are different types of shapes of uh, RBCs. For example, if there are schistocytes, so that will indicate a blood film review. For any kind of review, we need to have a well-stained and well-prepared slides. And when we are looking at the slides, reviewing the slides, we need to have the clinical information, CBC findings, and the expertise of the reviewer. That is an essential part of the diagnostic workup. So depending on the flags, for example, analyzer is now indicating there are some flags. So what are the flags? So those could be abnormal RBCs, abnormal WBCs, or immature cells, some infectious organisms, and uh, if there is any left shift, any blast. So from the routine technician, that will go to the senior technician, from the senior technician, that will go to the pathologist, and that's how they get reported. So there are different methods of uh, preparations of the blood film. They can be made either directly or indirectly. Direct is capillary blood by the finger print. Most commonly used is the venous blood and most commonly used anticoagulant is EDTA. So when we are making the slides, blood should be at the room temperature. And when we are mixing the tube with the blood, it should be mixed gently by rolling the tube. Do not vigorously shake or invert the tube, otherwise that will distort the cells and that will distort the morphology. Different methods for the preparation, they are push method or the cover slip method. This one is used most commonly. So this is how we make. So on the stain slide, we take a drop of blood and with the help of spreader, we spread the blood and we make a nice thin film. 
this is the area of thin film this is thick film and for the thick film with the corner of slide we spread the blood drop of the blood in the diameter of approximately one to two centimeter it should not be too thick because that would probably fall from the slides and to check the thickness you should be able to read the newspaper through it once slides are made they are dried and then they are fixed and then they are stained thin film they are fixed with 100 percent methanol thick film we don't fix and different types of stains used are light stain green glass stains called diff quick and the majority of the labs they have automated slide stainers uh, these are uh, this is wet method most commonly used anticoagulant is edta uh, first of all, it's most commonly available and most commonly used. There are different advantages of using DTTA. So first of all, we can make multiple slides and it will not distort the red cell morphology. All the indices, they are stable at least up to eight hours. In the blood and EDTA, slides ideally should be made within four hours. And the main principle of EDTA is it inhibit the clot formation by removing the calcium and that inhibit the clumping and agglutination. If we don't mix blood with EDTA nicely, or uh, that will lead to different types of clumping and different type of uh, uh, morphological problems. For example, here, this is platelet clumping. So before calling thrombocytopenia, make sure you look at at the feathered edge for these kind of large platelet clumps. This is also ADT artifact. Now you're seeing different types of vacuolization. These are cremated RBCs. So EDTA and blood should be mixed nicely before we make the slides. So an ideal film, it should have a tongue shape. It should cover at least two thirds of the side length. There should not be any holes, sticks or air bubbles. And a proper film has three parts. One is body, monolayer, and feathered edge. And body is a two-third of the entire smear, and it should blend smoothly into the monolayer. And then we have feathered edge, which is fine feathery. And then in between, we have the morphological area, which is monolayer area, and this is used for the morphology. And thick films we use for the parasites. So basically it has more volume of the blood and that means it has almost 11 times more sensitivity for the detection of the parasites. Before we say no parasite found, WHO recommend that at least 100 fields should be screened before calling a smear as negative. And we can also use some fluorescent dye, dyes for the detection of blood parasites. This is a nicely made blood film this is drop of the blood from here we use the spreader slide to make this slide so this is the thickest part this should not be used for the morphology so this area corresponds to this here you can see all those rbcs they are overlapping so here we should not we won't be able to see proper morphology of the cells and then we have the monolayer area this is the monolayer area here you can see all those rbcs they are barely touching each other. They are not overlapping. And we can see granulocytes in the background and all those small platelets scattered singly in the background again. And this is the feathered edge. If we don't have properly made slides, that means poor slides. With the poor slides, what can cause poor slides? For example, if blood drop is too thick, that means too large, that would make thick films. If it is too small, we are getting thin slides. And if we are putting too much pressure, that means we are disrupting the cells. If we are too slow, that may cause tailing of the RBCs and other problems could be if there are streaks, oily hands, or the staining problems, for example, understained or overstained. These are different types of poorly made slides. Here you can see this is not a tongue shape. This is kind of chipped, this is streaking. This is too thick, this is too small, there are holes, and we have different shapes here. Here also we can see this is nicely made slide, but this is too pale and this is too thick.
If we have poorly made slides, that means we might be missing some plants, hairy cells, parasites, and intrusions, etc. Once we have a nicely made and well stained slide, now we should have a proper approach. So all the cells, first of all, look for the quality of the slide and then look for the entire feather hatch for the large cells or any large platelet clumps. Find your monolayer. And then from that, now estimate and confirm the cell counts and then go systematically. So first of all, look at the RBC, WBC platelets and then any additional findings. So again, grossly look for the quality of the preparation and staining. And then at the 10x, we look for the distribution of the cells. We are looking at the larger things now. So for example, if there are any agglutination or only formation, large platelet clumps or any bigger parasites. At the 40 and 100x, now we are looking at the different morphology of the different components. So a systematic approach should be there. So first of all, for example, now we are looking at first red blood cells. So when we are looking at the red blood cells, we are looking at the size, number, shape, color, distribution, and any ingredient bodies. So for the size, uh, RBC size is approximately 7.2 micron B, and it has a almost similar size to small lymphocyte nuclei. And also we can compare the size to the MCV. So normal MCV is 100 to 80 to 100 femtoliter. Anything less than 80, that would be microcyte, and anything more than 100, that would be macrocytes. And then, like, then we look for the shape of the RBCs, then we look for the central pallor, and then we look for the distribution, are they clumping, any agglutination, rule formation, and then we need to look for any inclusion bodies within those RBCs. So depending on those RBC abnormalities, we have different terminologies. We say unisocytosis and phycocytosis. So unisocytosis means there are different sizes. Phycocytosis means there are different shapes. If we are looking at two different populations, look for the transfusion history, recent transfusion history. So depending on our size, either those cells, they are of normal size or they are small, microcytes, macrocytes, Macrocytes, they can be round, they can be oval, and if they are large and more blue, they can be poly polychromatic cells. And as I mentioned, for the size now, we are comparing to a small lymphocyte nuclei and also with the MCV. There are different shapes. They can be canthocytes, cluster cells, pipe cells, kinocytes, leptocytes, irregular contracted cells. And then if there are fragmented RBCs, clinated, fragmented, those are cystocytes. Look for the clinically hemolytic uh, picture. And these cystocytes, even if they are few, very mild, they are clinically significant. That probably is indicating some kind of hemolytic picture or some DIC going on. And different shapes, they are sickle cells, spherocytes, metocytes. For the inclusion bodies, we are looking for different inclusions. They are basophilic stippling, hollow jolly bodies, Pappenhammer bodies, or parasites. And if there are nucleated RBCs in the blood, that means there is some hemolysis. And if along with the R uh, nucleated RBCs, there is left shift. This is liquid through plastic. Now this is indicating either bone marrow is stressed or some kind of bone marrow infiltration going on. Next thing we need to look for are the WBCs. Again, we look for the number. So as per WHO, at least 200 white cells should be looked at. Look for the number distribution. So for the rough estimation, if we have two to five leukocytes per high power field, this is with a normal limits. If we have more than five leukocytes per high power field, this probably is leukocytosis. If less than two, this is leukopenia. For an adult person, neutrophils, they should have 40 to 75%. Lymphocytes, they are about 20 to 45 percent, eosinophils 1 to 6 percent, monocytes 2 to 10, basophils less than 1 percent. For the lymphocytes, along with the number, we need to look for the morphology. Now we are looking at either they are immature, mature, plasma site wide, hairy. For the monocyte, again, mature, immature, any liquid through plastic picture indicating some marrow fibrosis or stressed marrow. 
So when we are looking at the morphology, look for the shape, size, granules, any vacuolization lobes, whether they are immature granulocytes or mature granulocytes only. So for the immature granulocytes, we should not see these cells. Uh, these cells means myeloblasts, promyelocytes, myelocytes, metamyelocytes, or band. Next thing we need to look for lobes of the neutrophil, whether there's a hypersegmentation or a hyposegmentation. So at least one neutrophil with six or more nuclear segment, this is hypersegmentation, or at least 5% of the circuit neutrophils with five nuclear segment, this is also hypersegmentation. Next thing we need to look for the cytoplasm for the distribution of the granules. They should be nicely evenly distributed. So within those neutrophils, if we are seeing no granules, less granules, so this is indicating some kind of dysplasia. If we are seeing more granules, this is indicating some kind of infection or any uh, toxic granulation. Sphere neutrophilia with left shift is called as leukemoid. And then the differential diagnosis is chronic granulocytic leukemia, chronic myelocytic leukemia. And if we are looking at the right shift, that means there is hypersegmentation of the neutrophils that is indicating indirectly, probably there is megaloblastic anemia. Next thing to look at are the lymphocytes. Again, look for the number, lymphopenia or lymphocytosis. Look for the morphology, whether they are mature or immature. And for the morphology, now we are looking at the cytoplasm. So within those cytoplasm, are there any granules? Do they have any hairy or villous projections? Do they have more bluey cytoplasm, which is plasma cytoid cells? And also look for the background, especially in the CLL, if there are any smudge cells. And very rarely we can see these kind of cleavage or indentation. So those probably indicating some kind of uh, lymphoma cells. If they have like deep nuclear cleavage, those are probably follicular cells. If they have multiple indentation and clefts, those probably are the mental cells. Next component is platelets. Again, looking at the number, any clumping for the size, this is 1.3 to 3 micron meter is normal. Three to seven, they are considered as larger. So up to seven is now, this is almost the size of RBC. Look for the granularity. And very, very rarely we can see megakaryocytes and megakaryoblasts. So other than those normal components, well, now we need to look for other components, which is, we should not, which should not be seen in the blood film. For example, if there are any blast, plasma cells, mast cells, smudge cells, any parasites or inclusions. So for the parasites, we can see malaria, filaria, babiosis, trypanosmiasis, and very rarely we can also see green crystals with uh, neutrophils. So depending upon all this morphology and numbers, we can grade those findings. So morphologically, we have two tier system. So two plus is used for the moderate, three plus is for the many. And the designation one plus is used for the few or rare, and they can quantify as rare if we are seeing less than one per 100x, occasional one to three per 100x, few or mild, four to 10 per 100x, moderate 10 to 20 per 100x, or if there are more than 20, that means there are many. And assist your size that is used as few slash rare. And those are clinical, even if they are mild or very few. So now have you seen all the components? Now you have, um, you need to now report. So you should have a proper format of the reporting. So either you go systematically. So once you describe RBCs, then leukocytes, platelets, and then based upon all those findings, now you summarize all those findings. And then based upon that, you are now forming a differential diagnosis. And now you're recommending further laboratory evaluations. For example, if there are like a mature small lymphocytes along with the sponge cells, so probably you are looking at CLL pictures. So obviously you would recommend the flow cytometry for the phenotype of those small cells. And the reporting should always be in context of other clinical and CBC findings. 
there are some critical values in peripheral peripheral. For example, if there are first time blast, that is critical value. If there are cystiocytes, those broken and fragmented RBCs, indicating some kind of DIC or atomic hemolytic picture. Circulating plasma cells, indicating some kind of plasma cell dyscrasia. Sickle cells, this is again a critical disease, a critical uh, value. Promylocytes, probably some APL, and any infectious organisms, bacterial, malaria, etc. These are critical values. Now, this is diagrammatic picture of RBCs. So, this is normal RBC. Compared to this, this is small now. So, this is microcytic. So, most commonly we see this an iron deficiency anemia, chronic disease anemia, thalassemia, cytoplastic anemia. If RBCs, they are bigger. Now, they are macrocytes, they can be round, they can be ovalo. So we see these macrocytes either in liver disease, most commonly in MDS or chemotherapy. This one is parcel RBC. So now you have evenly distributed these spikes. And this is mostly seen in liver disease or possibly in acne. This one is the kinocytes, small spiky things. This is most commonly seen either as the artifact with EDTA or uremia or liver disease. Cystiocytes, this is fragmented RBC. And this is microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Vibe cell, most commonly seen in the G6 PD deficiency, unstable hemoglobin homeopathies, or oxidative drug. This is uh, leptocyte. So, leptocytes, microcytes, leptocytes, target cells, this probably is indicating severe iron deficiency anemia. Spherocytes, indicating some kind of hemolytic picture. Somatocytes, again, hereditary somatocytosis or in the liver disease. Again, target cells. Leptocytes and microcytes. This is either iron deficiency, it can be artifact, or this is post acne. Sickle cell in different types of sickle diseases. Tear drop cells indicating myelofibrosis or marrow infiltration. These are different crystals, hemoglobin C crystals. And this agglutination, it can be artifact, or now this is indicating cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Rolly formation this coin shaped stacking of the RBC. This is again, it can be multiple myeloma or this is lymphoma or chronic liver disease. This is another picture indicating different types of RBCs abnormalities. So these are inclusion bodies now. Other than shapes, we have now inclusion bodies here. So you can see here, these are cedrotic one, this is cavet shape, this is basophilic stippling, hovel jolly body, and different crystal formations here. So now let's look at different images. So this is the basis of normal blood film. Here you can see all those RBCs. They are touching each other, but not overlapping. And in the background, you have those small platelets, even distributed, not forming any kind of clumping. And then we have these venocytes and lymphocytes. This is small lymphocytes. So here you can see the nuclei of this nuclei. Uh, this lymphocyte is almost similar to this RBC. So both have almost similar uh, sites. And this is neutrophil. This is large granular lymphocyte. So this is normal film. So compared to that film, previous one, if we are looking at this film, this is looking so abnormal. So first of all, look at this RBCs. They have central pillar. They have different shapes. They have different uh, sizes as well. This is large platelet. These are faded cells, probably smart cells. So this probably is an artifact. So we need to make another slide to confirm these findings. So this is the problem with EDT. So here we have clumped uh, platelets. So before calling thrombocytopenia, make sure you compare your findings with the CBC finding and make sure these are not, uh, and to make sure these are uh, due to the EDTA rather than actual thrombocytopenia. Here you can see in the background, there is a bluish tinge. 
and all those RBCs, they are forming these stacks. So this is typical of Rule formation, which is seen typically in multiple myeloma or different lymphoproliferative disorders. Very rarely we can see these large platelets. So here you can see the size of this platelet is almost the size of RBC, rather bigger than that. This is mega thrombocytes. This picture is pale, quite pale. First of all, the number of RBCs is quite low. And then all those RBCs, they are almost empty. You can see only the rim of this central pillar is quite big here. And then we have small microcytes. This is sphere hypochromic picture, microcytic hypochromic picture, which is mostly seen in sphere iron deficiency anemia. Along with those hypochromic and small cells, we also see here those elliptiocytes. Here you can see these are small elliptiocytes, microcytes, these are microcytes, microcyte and elliptiocyte. This is hypochromic picture, predominantly elliptiocytes. This one is RBCs, they are a bit bigger. They have reduced central pillar and these cells, they have teardrop shells. So this probably is indicating some kind of myelofibrosis or some bone marrow infiltration. These are the cystiocytes. So these RBCs, these are polychromatic large cells. And then in the background, we are looking at these fragmented RBCs. Here you can see all those cells, they have these different shapes. These are fragments of RBCs. And also we are seeing this nucleated RBC. This is a critical value. This is indirectly indicating some hemolysis. This is again polychromatic picture, but we are also seeing these two nucleated RBCs. This is hypospelanic picture and indicating hemolysis. Here you can see all those spherocytes, multiple nucleated RBCs and platelet clumping, polychromasia. On the higher power, you can see these are polychromatic cells. In the background, there are spherocytes. And then we have on this side, nucleated RBCs. So this is typical of some hemolytic picture. These are sickle cells, polychromasia, sickling. Here you can see all those cells. They have half moon shape. These are typical of uh, sickle cells. Here again, those cells, they are small. They don't have any central pillar compared to RBC, this normal RBC. This RBC is small and uh, without any central pillar and uh, majority of the polychromatic cells, slightly increased platelets. And this neutrophil is showing only two lobes. This is pallid. So this is spherocytes, polychromasia, and palgary hue. So some kind of uh, MDS or hemolysis. This is typical picture of thalassemia. Here you can see quite large cells, nucleated RBC, and then we have this kind of hypochromic picture. This is dimorphic picture, normal cells and hypochromic cells. And in the background, we have these dysplastic neutrophils. Here, this neutrophil having only two lobes with uh, very few granules. This is also hypogranular and nuclear shape is almost a ring shape. Now these cells, they are large, round. These are macrocytes and also neutrophils. They are hypogranular. So if patient, they have macrocytic picture with pancytopenia, dysplastic neutrophils, this probably is indicating MDS. This is also dysplastic neutrophil. Now this one is lymphocytosis. Here you can see RBC and the neutrophil, they have almost same size. Nuclei is quite condensed and not showing any nucleoli. One nucleated RBC and then in the background, there are smudge cells. So this is lymphocytosis with smudge cells. Indirectly, this probably is indicating CLL, and then we need to compare with the flow cytometry for the phenotype of these lymphocytes. 
And one nucleated RBC is probably indicating some kind of autoimmune, autoimmune hemolytic anemia in the background of CLL. These are abnormal monocytes. So first of all, there is monocytosis. On those monocytes, they are big, large, uh, pale looking nuclei, and then we have multiple vacuoles within those uh, cytoplasm. And a few of the nuclei, they are showing these prominent nuclei. So these are abnormal looking monocytes, which need further investigation. Very rarely we see pancytopenia, and then we see these kind of abnormal looking cells. Here we can see this reniform folded nuclei, it has high enzo ratio, big prominent nuclei. This is also dumbbell shaped nuclei with central nuclei, and these are APL cells, acute promyelostic leukemia. This is again a critical value because these patients, they can bulk very quickly DIC, so need to inform to the clinician as soon as possible. So compared to these kind of blasts, this blast, it doesn't have any reniform nuclei. It has central nuclei, high NC ratio. So this is non-APL blast, but these are typical of APL blasts. Again, these are APL blasts with odd dots. This is again clumped, uh, folded, and reniform nuclei. This one is, first of all, there is lymphocytosis. I'm hardly seeing any platelet. So there is thrombocytopenia, uh, leukocytosis, and then these cells, they have a high NC ratio. I'm not seeing any R rod. So this is quite diagnostic of acute leukemia. And then again, we need to compare with the flow cytometry or the phenotype of these plasts. Sometimes we see these kind of plasma cytoid cells. So here we have lymphocyte, but it has a very blue looking cytoplasm. So this is typical of plasma cytoid cells. It's not typical of plasma cells because plasma cells that would have an eccentric a nuclei with abundant blue cytoplasm. This one is central, but it still has very blue cytoplasm. So these are plasma cytoid cells. So again, we need to compare with the flow cytometry for the phenotype of these cells. Very rarely we see these kind of lymphocyte which has abundant cytoplasm and also has these kind of cytoplasmic projections. So majority of the hairy cell leukemia, they present with pancytopenia. And we need to hunt for those hairy cells. But this was an exceptional case where patient had leukocytosis and a majority of the lymphocyte had these kind of projections. And uh, on the flow cytometry, this was consistent with hairy cells. So this is the higher power of the hairy cell. Here you can see these are uh, cytoplasmic projections, and then they have this pale fuzzy nuclei, and this is also shown from the nucleoli. This is Google image, and uh, here you can see different types of parasites within those RBCs. So here this is forming a ring shape. This is falcipam gamete. This is babiosis, trypanosomiasis. Phylaria, and very rarely we can see these hyphae, pseudo hyphae of the candida. And very rarely we can see some miscellaneous stuff. So, for example, this, if I don't have any history, and if I'm looking at these kind of neutrophils, now you can see all those cells. First of all, this cell, this has a very high NC ratio, prominent nucleoli, not seeing any error. This is quite typical of blast. And then all these complete cells, they have a very hypergranular uh, uh, cytoplasm, hypergranular cytoplasm. And uh, this one is also showing some kind of nuclei. So these are typical of uh, either promyelocytes or hypergranular, hypertoxic granules. So this patient was on GCSF, granulocytic colony stimulating factor. So if you are looking at uh, these kind of cells, make sure you're looking at the clinical history as well. Otherwise, you would probably call this blast cells. Again, barely we can see some cytoplasmic inclusions. So this is plasma cytoid cells with a typical cytoplasmic inclusion. And very, very rarely we see these kind of crystals with the neutrophils. This is, first of all, this cell is quite big. Neutrophil, and in the cytoplasm, we are seeing these blue granules along with the cytoplasmic vascularization. 
again those blue crystals this mostly we see in the critically ill patient and these are called green crystals also known as crystals of death so the take home points blood smears they are inexpensive and the rapid assessment it should be evaluated in context of the clinical picture and the cbc findings there is a significant variation in the reporting policies and each lab they should have their own written sop and you should have a list of critical values based upon the morphology review these are different uh, references thank you so much for listening to me if you have any question please uh, refer to dr gupta i will try to answer as soon as possible thank you so much stay safe bye for now thanks